Okay guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to melt down almost useless scrap aluminium like this and turn it into useful ingots like this. These ingots can then be used to melt down into slingshots or other parts made of solid aluminium. Using this method, I've made 5 new slingshots and I'll be showing you how I made these slingshots in future videos. So first I need to get something out the way, as in previous videos I've had about a million comments about the way that I say aluminium. In Britain, you call it aluminium and in America, you call it aluminium. And I don't really mind which one you call it, but I call it aluminium since I live in Britain. And you can display as much anger as you want in the comment section down below and be sure that I won't bother reading it. With that out the way, we can now start the video. So for this project, I'm going to be using four different sources of aluminium and you can use any of these and also just any scrap aluminium that you haven't lying about. The first source is just some scrap offcuts from sheet material, which I've used in the past for other projects. The second source is just old pieces of aluminium from failed attempts at casting. And then the third source is a smashed up motorbike engine casing, which wasn't useful for anything else but remelting down. And obviously I've got to separate steel and aluminium parts using a magnet. The final source is not as recommended as the first three, since it's less pure, but it's aluminium soda cans, and these are really available for absolutely free. And these do still work quite well, even despite creating quite a lot of slag and being quite impure. So now using a strong rare earth magnet, I'm then going to separate any pieces of steel that somehow managed to get into my aluminium, to make sure that everything's just pure aluminium. Also here you can clearly see that there are some steel or ferrous metal bearings inside the aluminium engine casing, and when I do smash up this to melt it, I'm going to have to make sure to separate these parts too. Next you also want to try and clean your aluminium as much as possible, and as you can see here on the engine casing as an example, there's a load of different types of oil and just general grime that's built up on it and you want to try and clean that off because it's going to make your aluminium impure. So if you've done all of that correctly, we can then get to melting some aluminium. First things first, you're going to need a forge and this is just a simple coal powered forge. As you can see, I've got some lumps of coal here and I've also got some newspaper and wood that I'm going to use to start it. The way that this forge works is it's basically got an air pump here which you can turn on like this and then that forces air through this tube, out this, and through a hole in the bottom here, and then into the fire, and then the oxygen in the air will fuel the fire and make it hot enough to melt aluminium. Grant Thompson at the King of Random made a really great tutorial on how to make one of these out of just a simple metal flower pot. Obviously when using the forge, all basic safety rules apply, like wear safety glasses to protect you from any sparks. Also, I'm going to be wearing a leather apron in future, which I've actually purchased after this video. And also, I'd recommend welder's gauntlets to help protect you from the heat. And I also purchased them after this video. On top of that, don't do it on like any flammable wooden surfaces. Grass is alright, but it's not as good as something solid like concrete or steel or something else much better than that. Also, sturdy leather walking boots offer a little bit more protection than just something like nylon trainers. So now let's light the forge and get started. The forge is lit easily just using fire lighters and a couple of bits of scrap wood and once the fire started going you could turn on the fan and it instantly starts to get really hot. This forge is really simple, it's basically just a metal bucket with a refractory coating of 50-50% mixture of plaster of Paris and sand and then that's insulating it. Once the fire started to burn really hot and it's giving off a lot of heat and it's burning nice and red, you can start to put in the crucible. For the crucible I'm going to be using, I'm using a 3kg graphite crucible bought for £30 off eBay. This was quite expensive but it was a good investment since I'm doing a lot of casting at the moment and these last basically as long as you want if you get the high quality ones. You can also use steel soup cans for this and I've used them in the past and they've worked alright but you've got to be really careful to not melt holes in them. Other people in different tutorials as well have also used the bottoms of fire extinguishers and other steel tubes, but of course none of them are going to work as well as a graphite crucible. For manoeuvring the crucible about, I'm using some steel crucible tongs which are really good and useful because you want to make sure that when the crucible is full of molten aluminium, you want to have a good grip on it, you don't want to be dropping it while it's full of aluminium and then getting it poured all down your leg or something like that. Again this was purchased off eBay but it probably wouldn't be too difficult to make something like this yourself. The crucible is then put in the fire and coals are built up around it so that it gets nice and hot. After probably about 30 seconds the crucible is hot enough to put in some of the aluminium and then that will start to melt. All of the scrap pieces of aluminium that I showed you earlier have been either smashed or cut up into pieces small enough so they'll easily fit inside the crucible. 
pieces are then basically piled up into the crucible while they're solid until the crucible is pretty much full and then they'll melt down and you keep on piling up more until the crucible is probably about 90% full. Once you've got quite a bit of aluminium in the bottom, molten, you can then push solid pieces down into the aluminium and then that will help them melt much faster if they're already encased in molten aluminium. Then using a stainless steel spoon that will not melt at the high temperatures of the aluminium, I'm then going to scrape off all of the slag or dross that has floated to the top from any impurities in the metal. So if you really wanted to purify your metal, you could add in a borax flux or something along those lines and then that would help to purify it. You could also degas the aluminium by adding something to degas it or bubbling air through it, but I prefer not to do them for, those ingot, for the ingots which I'm using now and then do it for the final product later on once I remelt the ingots. Now the crucible is 90-95% to 95 full and it's time to pour it. I'm going to be pouring it into an old cake tin which is a stainless steel cake tin and it was originally lined with teflon but that's all completely burned off but it still works fine for melting aluminium ingots and pouring them into it. This is quite a small cake tin but you can also basically do it in a load of variety of different baking tray type things and you can make loads of different types of ingots that look really nice but you need to make sure that every ingot that you pour can fit back inside your aluminium crucible because you might end up pouring 10 ingots that are all too large and then you're going to have to cut them all in half and that would take a lot of time. So now the crucible's full all the way to the top with the molten aluminium and I've cleared the slag from the top just using the spoon. I'm going to take the crucible tongs pull out the crucible and I'm now going to pour it into aluminium ingots in this tray. Pour out all of the aluminium into the tray until it's all run out and then it's just empty in the crucible. And that's pretty much all of the aluminium in there. So this is what the ingot tray looks like after the pour and as you can see the metal is still really hot and it's actually scorching the wood below. So it's all completely solid now and you can check that just by tapping it with something metal. So now I can pour on some water and cool it down. So once they've cooled down just a little bit you can pour them out. So once I've pulled them all out, I've got 10 good solid aluminium ingots from only about an hour and a half's work and now that my forge is already heated up, it's really easy and quick to cast even more. So between each pouring into the ingot tray, I'm going to make sure that I heat it over the fire for a good few minutes to make sure that all of the water has been boiled off it. I want to make sure that it's above water boiling temperature, so above 100 degrees when I pour the metal in because otherwise any moisture on the surface will build up and it could actually cause an explosion of aluminium that will go straight into my face which would be really dangerous. So now after the end of this process I've got a massive amount of solid cast aluminium ingots that weigh quite a lot and all of these will be enough for tons and tons of different projects. So now whenever I want to cast something out of aluminium I can take some of these pure aluminium ingots and melt them down inside the crucible. Then before casting the part I'm going to add a borax flux and then I can cast them into a pure substance. So as you saw at the beginning of the video, using this method of then melting down the aluminium into pure ingots and then melting that down into pure slingshot or different parts, I've made 5 different slingshots out of cast aluminium and next week will be the tutorial on how to cast this slingshot or these two slingshots just using a simple sand mould.
On top of that, I've also cast a slingshot using a full lost foam casting method, there will be a tutorial on that, and as most requested, I've cast the slingshot using the green sand casting method. And in another video, I'm going to be comparing all of the different methods and recommending different methods for casting different parts. So I hope to have some of these videos up in the next month or so, and there'll definitely be a video up next week. And once all of these videos are up, I'll put the link in the description to my aluminium casting playlist, where you can find every single one of my aluminium casting videos, from my very first video to my most recent video in even a couple of years, I will have done more aluminium projects. And you can really see the development from very simple clay moulds that did not work, to all of these different types of moulds. Also, I've cast quite a lot of aluminium slingshots now, and I think for the moment, definitely, I'm pretty much done with casting aluminium slingshots. I'd really like to cast some new projects, and if any of you guys have any ideas on what you think I should cast, please post them in the comments section down below. But just as a warning, I don't want to cast an aluminium steam engine, because that's a bit complicated. And also, you can't cast an aluminium sword or a ninja star. It's way too soft. Please don't bother suggesting doing that. Also, thanks for helping me reach 50,000 subscribers, I couldn't have done it without you guys. On top of this as well, Inventables has agreed to send me their newest CNC router machine, which is called the x -Carve, and I'm really excited to receive it. Shipping starts in 3 weeks, and if you want to have a look at the x -Carve, you can check it out on the Inventables website. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video, you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here. If you want to find out the full videos, then go to my channel and check them out.